yeah, yeah. All right, look. We're going to be reading a comment from YouTube, and I'm going to make a video about this comment. And I'm explaining to you why I do things the way I do them. And I'm explaining why this commenter view me as ignorant and arrogant. As you can see, why my phone look like that? He says, arrogance kills sooner or later. A little humility, a little humility by choice goes a long way. Your status has you acting like this. Let something happen and you lose a third of your clients. You will be glad to skip a few weeks and keep someone on the schedule. Times are tight. People are trying to cut back the best way they can without messing people over. Okay, TCBJ6EO. Yeah, 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 yeah. TCBJ6EO. He says arrogance kills sooner or later. It's the difference between being arrogant and it's the difference between running a business. I'm out here running a business. I'm not out here for nobody's friendship or friendship cookies or friendship bracelets or Christmas cards. I'm out here to run a profitable bin. That's why I'm out here. I left my full-time job with benefits, vacation time, health insurance, and retirement to run my own business. I'm not out here for nothing else but for high profit margins. I'm not out here for nothing else but high profit margins. And I hope when you go look for a job, you go get the job who's paying the most in your field. He also says, a little humility by choice go a long way. Yeah, I'm not out here for humility. I'm out here for high profit margins. Your status has you acting like, yeah, my status has me acting like this because you see, when my business go belly up, who's gonna feed my wife and five children? So my status has me acting like I need to run a profitable business, then so be it. Let's continue on a little more with what he said. Let something happen and you lose a third of your clients. You'll be glad to skip a few weeks and keep someone on schedule. Let something happen and you lose a third of your clients. Well, you see, while I have the majority of my clients, I need to be make sure I'm charging premium rates and getting paid on time. Because you see, if I have a client that gets laid off, I fire them. If my client reach out and say, Gibson, I can't pay the line bill, I've just been laid off. I'm gonna tell them, Bill, you're fired. Why would I keep you on my schedule, Bill? Listen, first of all, lawn service is a luxury service. Like going to the barber shop, getting a haircut, that's a luxury service. Having somebody to come over to wash my vehicle, that's a luxury service. Having a, a lady to come clean my house, that's a luxury service. Having somebody to wash and fold my clothes, that's a luxury service. So when you call me and tell me, Gibson, I just got laid off, I won't have the money. I'm gonna say congratulations, you are fired. Because see, if I work for people who can't pay their bill, I can't pay my bill. And I don't know how long you've been watching Gibson's Lawn Service, but where were you? You see, years ago, it was a hurricane coming through town. And everybody had, look, the hurricane was 12 days out. It was still a tropical storm that was predicting it was gonna come our way. So I lined up all my clients to run out and maintain everybody's property. And everybody said, we will pay you after the storm. We wanna see what the storm gonna do. See, that's why I refuse to work for poor people, section eight people, penny pension, po mouthing, check to check living, food stamps. I don't wanna deal with none of that. If you can't afford a lawn care, flip you. I don't want, I don't want your property. Uh, let's read a little more on what he said. Times are tight. 
I don't want to work for nobody where times are tight. I ain't none of my clients times are tight. I don't want no tight time and client. I want a flourishing client. You can't, you cannot build a business with a bunch of tight wads. You cannot build a bi business with a bunch of cheapskates. I don't work for people like that. Time's tight. I don't give a flip about how tight times is. I'm out here for high profit margins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, y'all y'all started business to be friends. Man, time's tight. I let you skip a service, Mr. Bill. Bill, get your pole mouthing, pole living behind off my schedule. Since you can't afford lawn care, I'm firing you and then I'm blocking your number because I'm out here for high profit margins because, Bill, if you can't pay your bill, I can't pay my bills, Bill. I refuse to have 50 clients like you that's penny pinching and your money done got tight because soon as stuff hit the fan, Bill, you're going to pay mortgage first, truck note second, lights, water, groceries, and we'll tell the line, man, we'll catch them later. Get your pole mouthing, pole living, tight wad having, food stamp grabbing self off of my schedule. Stop trying to mess people over. What the flip, man? I'm not an AC man. I'm not a flipping plumber. I'm not a flipping mechanic. I am a flipping man that's coming to cut the flipping grass. Getting the grass cut is not a flipping necessity. It is a choice not to do it your flipping self. When you buy a house, when you buy a house, you either need to set up lawn care or go grab you a 21 flipping craftsman and push it. One thing I know, you can be dying in the hospital or you can be on vacation. The grass at your house is growing. And me as a lawn guy, I don't give a flip about what you got going on. Pay the flipping bill or find somebody the flip else. My, that's like that one dude. I cut his property. I said, sir, this is how I operate. All of my clients have to get on a schedule. I will determine if you need weekly service or bi-weekly service. The only thing I ask in return is to be paid when services are done. Sounds like a plan to me, Gibson. Cut the property the first time. He paid. The neighbor come out. I explained to her the same thing. Yes, ma'am, I can maintain your property for $80 of service. Only thing, I, only thing I demand is that you jump on a schedule and please pay the bill after services are rendered. Sound like a plan to me, Gibson. Well, Mr. Bill felt as though on the second cut, he didn't pay. That's all right, some people forget. The third cut, he didn't pay. Mr. Bill, you have not paid your last two services. He didn't respond. So I reached back out to Mr. Mr. Bill. I appreciate your business, but I will no longer be able to keep you on my schedule because my small business thrives and operates on cash flow. And if the cash isn't flowing, you got to go. This is was his response. He said, he said the GD word. He said, God, my son in the hospital. Okay. Did you tell the mortgage company, my son in the hospital, I can't pay you? Because there was a point in time in my life, I was working for cheap, pole mouthing clients, and I was two months behind on my truck note and two months behind on my mortgage. And I called my mortgage company and said, listen, I'm through, I'm in a rough patch. Can y'all give me some grace? They said, Mr. Gibson, the only grace we can give you is 15 days late after the first payment. It is a $50 fee, Mr. Gibson. And when the second month hit and you're 15 days late again, it is a $100 fee. And Mr. Gibson, on day 90, we start the procedure for foreclosure. So we don't push any payments back. We don't deal with forgiveness. This is a bank, Mr. Gibson. You should have thought about that before you signed up for a mortgage. Then I called a place where I financed my truck at. I said, man, is there any way y'all can work with me? They said, Gibson, you are two months late. If you don't have payment on day 90, we will send the repo truck out. 
They don't give a flip. So I ain't give a flip about what he got going on. You telling me your son in the hospital living in a $300,000 house. Not to mention he runs out, buys a brand new truck. Also buys a brand new Harley. But we talking about $80, $80 flipping dollars. So no, I, I'm not, I don't have no leniency for tight wads. I don't have no leniency if you get laid off. I don't have no leniency. It, look, I guarantee you any kind of money, some of those guys that's on the port striking, they got a lawn guy cutting their yard. If if one of our clients was a loan short, he said, I'm going on strike. I'm going to send that invoice. He don't pay that invoice, he fired. I ain't playing this flipping game in 100 degree heat. I'm sitting in front of your house with a $60,000 setup. I'm not sitting out there for charity, friendships, hookups, or deals. I'm sitting in front of your house looking for high profit margins. If your property is not a good fit for Gibson's Lawn Service, you are fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought we was friends. He thought I started a business for friendship. Flip that.